Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? I am so excited for this video because we are going to be going through my entire indie eyeshadow palette collection. If you are new here, my name is Amy and I love talking about indie makeup brands. It is my passion here on YouTube, so if you'd like to see more of that, don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you go. But today, I really just wanted to go through every single indie eyeshadow palette in my collection because there are so many beautiful concepts and inspirations and color stories and just so much magic happening in this collection. But it is going to be a very long one, so let's just jump right on in. I did go ahead and organize every single palette into brands to make this as fast and easy as possible because like I said, we have a lot to get through. So let's start with Odin's Eye, which obviously I have like a million eyeshadow palettes from them. I did not realize how big my collection of their shadows is. So if you see any of these brands and you wanna see like an individual video just going all in, doing a bunch of swatches, ranking palettes, let me know, cause we don't really have time for that today. This video would be hours long if that were the case. But let's just go through these real quick. So. That was a bad idea. So we have a bunch of mini palettes from Odin's Eye, which we can go through really quickly. So we've got the mini sky palette, which just looks like this. There is the mini ocean palette, which this one has such pretty shimmers in the middle. These are a little bit older from Odin's Eye. We've got the mini forest palette, another super cute one. And then we've got the Verdandi mini palette. I think this is honestly one of my favorites just because I feel like it's such a good standalone palette. We have the Erd mini palette which is another one of my absolute favorites because it's a little bit more like grungy, some green vibes going on. And then we also have the Scood palette. I'm probably not pronouncing that right but here's what she looks like. This one is all shimmers. So Odin's Eye has done a lot of collaborations. We have the Hummingbird palette with the Fancy Face. This is a really beautiful, like tropical color story. We've got the red dragon palette, which they did with It's Judy. And this is a little bit more of just like a really beautiful, warm, neutral color story. We've got the giant wolves palette, which they did with Annette, which this is such a pretty, like colorful, cool toned color story. We have the planet spirit palette, which they did with Betty Jean which is definitely, I feel like, one of their most colorful palettes, more of a rainbow-esque vibe. We've got the Sea Talk palette that they did with Lauren May Beauty. In this palette, these two shades right here are my absolute go-tos. Like, they are the most beautiful neutral eyeshadow look. We've got the Floristery palette, which they did with Makeup Just For Fun. It's such a pretty, cutesy, little purpley green moment. I love, love, love that one. And then of course, we've got the Hella palette with Angelica. So this is a really bright mixture of some green, some pink, just a stunning. I do have their Christmas palettes. I have the other one actually still in the packaging and everything. I feel bad even mentioning these because I never used them and I know that people are obsessed with these and so upset that they were so limited edition. Um, so yeah, I, I'm like holding on to it because I feel like it's special, but like I also can't bring myself to touch it. We have the Stone and Rock palette, which is one of their newest launches. This is a stunning green grungy color story. Honestly, one of my favorites that they've done. It is so beautiful. The textures, the mattes, everything stunning. And then they also came out with the Jewels and Gem palette at the same time as Stone and Rock, which is a little bit more on the cool tone side, but another just beautiful, beautiful palette. We've got the Norns palette here which just look like this. And I'm pretty sure that they actually did just redo this palette. They're releasing it with their new packaging. We've got the Alva eyeshadow palette, which this is one of their first palettes, definitely more on the soft side. And I will say that their quality has done nothing but improve. So if you tried some of their older releases, like they're good, they are, but their newer ones are just amazing. So we've got Saga Freya palette here which is like this like romantic little book looking palette. We also have the, oh sorry, that was the chapter one Tears of Freya. And then we have the Saga of Freya chapter two Cat with Golden Carriage, which is another really fun one. And then there's also 
this book, which has two sides, it's another Saga of Freya palette. So you've got that side, and then you've also got this side. Like their packaging is just so cutesy. We've got the Soul Main 2 eyeshadow palette here, which is a vivid jewel tone palette. And that is everything from Odin's Eye. So next here, I have all of my palettes from Adept Cosmetics, which again, quite a bit of these and they're actually very heavy. It's cause their packaging is like super nice, high quality packaging. So we've got the Seahorse palette, which is their newest launch. This is a palette full of multi-chromes. You can see mine is pretty messy. It is stunning. We've got the House of L palette, which is no longer available, but it is a really beautiful, vibrant color story and just, if you don't know Adept, you are missing out. Their shimmers are everything. We have the Amunet palette and the Amunet New. I'm trying to remember which one of these was the original. I think Amunet New is what it was called to begin with. And this is the deep version of the palette. And then Amunet is the updated version. And this is the light one. So I have both of those. We've got the Arrow inspired palette, which is unfortunately no longer available, but this is a really beautiful colorful one. I love the mattes that were included in this palette and then you've got a bunch of multi-chromes and duo chromes and it's just all super intense. We've got the Plain Jane palette which was the OG original palette from Adept, the reason I fell in love with them and it is just stunning. I feel like hopefully you guys can see I've got some major dips going on in multiple of these shadows. They are just beautiful, beautiful shimmers. So sparkly, so duochrome-y. I have like a million videos on my channel about Adept. We've got Ninhydrin here, which is this like really beautiful purple packaging. It's very similar to the Natasha Nona Lila packaging. And here's what she looks like. I feel like I'm already getting out of breath. Like I need to calm down, but I just have so many palettes to show you guys, so. This video was definitely an undertaking. We've got the Plain Jane Remastered, which is the updated version of Plain Jane, and I love this packaging. Very Barbie-esque, Barbie core. So this one is essentially very similar shades. I did a whole video showing the old one versus the new one. And then we have the Heather Austin collaboration with Adept, and this is just a stunning, stunning palette. Honestly, one of my favorite color stories Adept has ever done. I love the shimmers in here so much. And I feel like the mattes that were chosen could go in so many different directions. We've got the Minka palette, which is for all of the neutral lovers. Like the shimmers, the just sparkly neutrals in here are everything. Like, cannot say enough good things. We've got the Codain palette, which this is another little bit of an older one. And this one, the color story doesn't necessarily do anything for me, but all of the shimmers individually are still really, really beautiful. Lastly, we have the La Cienega palette, which is definitely more on the neutral side. You've got some really pretty neutral mattes and then just five super intense sparkly shimmers. And that is all of the Adept palettes. Going in no particular order, just grabbing whatever I can. Next, I have my palettes from Lunar Beauty. So we have the Eternal Eclipse palette. I am such a sucker for their packaging. And this is such a pretty neutral palette with some pops of blue. This silver is one of the most intense silvers in my entire collection. And then of course we have Moonspell and Moonspell 2. They're both so cute. I'm such a sucker for book packaging on palettes. It's just so pretty. All the Halloween vibes. I feel like if I remember correctly, I didn't like the formula on number two as much as number one, but it is a stunning palette nonetheless. Next, I have my palettes from Glaminatrix. I figured we could do these because I am actually wearing one of these on my eyes today. So we have their Nearly Natural palette. This is one of my favorite neutral palettes. I love it so, so much. Here's what it looks like. It is just stunning. The mattes are beautiful. They all are like super fun. And every shimmer in here is just so intense, so pretty. I used this pink one right here actually in my Barbie look that I did for when I went and saw the Barbie movie. But I just love this one. I love that you can go mauve you can go true neutral, you can go a little more cool toned, you can go green, but it's all just like this like soft, nearly natural moment. And then we have the Sugar and Spice palette, which is what I have on my eyes today. This is the newest release from Glaminatrix. Super cute. I kind of went a little bit more pop of yellow with this one. 
Next we have the Glamorous palette, which is more on the colorful side. Super pretty with the greens and the purples happening in here. We have the Nocturnal palette, which looks like this. Super grungy. We have the You Beauty palette, which this one is super cute because all of the names are like these fun Australian names. I actually accidentally broke this shadow a little bit. We got Good Day, Budgie Smugglers. It's just all so cute. And then we have the Sandra Rose palette, which I believe was the very first palette that Glamanatrix ever came out with. And here is what that one looks like. Okay, next we can do Copacetic Cosmetics, which I only have two palettes from them, and they're actually both collabs. So I have their Companion palette, which was their collab with M. Jones, which just looks like this. It's all sparkly, like pastel shades. And then they also have the Elysian palette with Basket Case Beauty, which is this Northern Lights inspired palette. You've got some mattes, some shimmers, and all the shimmers are like these light iridescent duochromes. I thought this color story was so cute. Okay, the next huge stack of palettes we have is from Sydney Grace, another really heavy one. So we've got the Love's Journey palette here, one of their newer launches. It's like this really beautiful, just soft, neutral color story, and I have the light version. A bunch of their palettes are available in a light and a deep version, which is super cool. We have the Summer Days palette, which I believe they're discontinuing, and it makes me sad because it is so pretty. It's like this soft, warm, neutral palette. We've got the Autumn's Rain palette, which is actually the first one that they ever came out with and the only one that I don't love. Something about this color story, I don't know. It just never did it for me, but thankfully I gave them another chance because the rest of their palettes have my heart and soul. We've got the Enduring Love palette, which is like one of my favorite all-time neutral palettes. This shade Romeo is just everything. I love it so, so much. I don't reach for it as much these days, I think because I was kind of like, let me just give it a break. We have their Tropicolor palette, which they did in collaboration with the Fancy Face. This is a stunning, super colorful palette with pops of neutrals. We have their Tiny Marvels palette, which they did with Mel Thompson. Out of everything, this would be my favorite palette from Sydney Grace. The formula, the colors, everything, just absolutely stunning. I live and breathe for the shade Fire Butts. We have the Chase Your Dreams palette. This one is kind of like a warm, purpley palette. Not one that I reach for a ton. And then we have all three of the Temptalia palettes. So we've got Radiant Reflection, which is a really pretty jewel tone palette. We have On the Horizon, which is like these like soft kind of muted colorful tones. And then we have Quintessence, which this one is my personal favorite because I feel like it's just a really fun, smoky, cool tone moment. We have the Be Mine palette, which actually someone asked me the other day how I felt about this palette compared to something else. And I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I don't own that palette, but I do. I think I was confusing this for something else, but I have it here and this is what it looks like. It's kind of like romantic, soft vibes. We have the Mountain Trail palette, which used to be a collection of single shadows and now it is available together. And it's like these really beautiful, warm, yellowy green vibes. How many times am I gonna say vibes in this video? I don't know, probably way too many. We have the Coffee Talk palette, which is another favorite. It's just like such a true neutral palette. I actually took this with me as the only palette when I went to a, on a trip to New York City last month and I love it. I feel like it's such a good one. Again, I'm pretty sure this is being discontinued. And then we have the California Coast palette, which is like these like soft kind of like rosewood brown shades we have the raspberry kiss palette which is all like another neutral palette but with more of a pop of pink to it and then lastly we have the heaven on earth palette one of their new launches this one is so beautiful it's like a neutral lovers blue green palette just so cute okay next i have all my palettes from fantasy cosmetica so we have the bard eyeshadow palette which I don't know if this was based off of the Bard from The Witcher, but my boyfriend and I were looking at this palette and we're like, is that what it's from? But here's what that one looks like. And then we have the Fighter palette, which is their newest launch. This one is definitely more on the neutral side. We have the Sorcerer palette, which is the like really pretty pink, blue, and purple tones. 
And then personally, I think my favorite is the Druid palette, their very first one, because it's like this grungy palette, but the mattes in here are so good. Like this grungy green is so amazing. Like such a good first impression because of that matte in particular really uh, stole the show. I have two palettes here from It's Belle Cosmetics, but I haven't heard anything about them in a while, so I'm not sure if these are still being sold, but I have the Break the Rules palette, which is all a bunch of just really sparkly, duochrome shimmers, and then we have the Flare Collection Remix, which again is all like sparkly, duochrome shades. This one just happens to be a little bit more on the purple side. Okay, next I have a bunch of palettes from Maybe Beauty. So they have all these like travel palettes that are super cute. We have Take Me to Istanbul, which looks like that. These are a little bit older and that's another brand. I haven't seen them do anything new in a while, but they're still so cute. We have Take Me to Paris, love it. Take Me to Santorini. And then we have a Take Me to Tokyo. Look how cute. Okay, next I have two palettes from Lethal Cosmetics. And in general, they don't really do palettes. More often they do single shadows and everything is available individually. But they do have two palettes that are their collaborations with Teresa is Dead. So we've got Teresa is Lethal and Lethal is Dead. I love it. Like I think it is so, so cute. So... Here's what they look like. Honestly, a killer collaboration, if I do say so. I can't get it open. Here's the other. Okay, I have two palettes from Unearthly Cosmetics. They used to be called Alien Cosmetics, and I had a few palettes from them that I ended up decluttering because I didn't love the quality. But I will say after trying their rebranded new palettes, I am impressed. So we have the Don't Be Jelly palette here, which is so cute because it's based on jellyfish and it's just such a pretty color story. And then we also have their Resurgence palette, which was their collaboration with Heather Austin. So here's what that one looks like. I honestly have been reaching for this white so much. Like on first impression, I thought it was a little bit powdery, but it is so intense and it is just perfect for like brightening up any look. And then I have two different palettes from What's Up Beauty. We have their Desert Monsoon palette which is a really pretty kind of neutral color story with a little pop of some different jewel tones. And then we also have the Geodes palette, which is such a cute packaging. Again, kind of soft with pops happening and the quality of these is really nice. Okay, next we have a stack of palettes from Blend Bunny Cosmetics, another brand that is one of my top favorite indie brands. I love them so, so much. They just have the most beautiful aesthetic packaging and quality and I love them. I could sit here and talk about them for way too long. So we're not gonna do that. We've got the Sugar and Grunge palette, which is their most recent launch. Just looks like this. We have their Trove palette, which is actually just a quad of a little multi-chromes. We've got the All Done Up palette. This one is like the most stunning grungy neutral color story. We've got their original blends palette, which is the perfect matte rainbow palette. Every color you could possibly need. We've got the Lure palette, which is obviously very mermaid inspired, mermaid vibes. The Dollhouse palette. The Surge palette. Ooh. I cannot stop dropping things, oh my god. We've got the Surge palette, which has like this row of really bright neons. And then we also have the Primal palette. Okay, next, I have just three palettes from Cleona Cosmetics. And I feel like I never liked the quality of two of these, but I could also not see myself decluttering them because they are so beautifully made and like special, even though I didn't love them. So this is the Paleo palette and the packaging is like one of a kind, just so pretty. The shimmers in here are nice, but I do not like the mattes at all. Ooh, one of these shadows actually got a little bit crushed. So hopefully you guys can kind of see what it looks like. Such cool packaging. And then we also have the Archeo palette. 
This one has more mattes, so it was more of a disappointment. I just do not like this matte formula, but this is really old. So like, just take that with a grain of salt if you're wanting to try anything from Cleona. They honestly do the most amazing multi-chromes. I also have their Dragon Fruit Palette, which was their collaboration with Emily Violet Marie. So cute. Like this packaging just absolutely stands out and it's all shimmers. You've got some satins, some multi-chromes, everything like that, but I love it. Okay, next I have three palettes here from Alomar Cosmetics, which I love them. I have their original Reina del Caribe palette, which just looks like this. It's such a good everyday palette. And then we have the Reina del Caribe volume two, which is a little bit more on like the night kind of smoky side. And then we have the Encanto palette, which this collaboration just made my heart so happy. I love the palette, love the packaging. It is just perfection. Can't say enough good things. Okay, another brand that we've got a decent little stack going from is Menagerie Cosmetics. So I do have their original palette because they used to be called Makeup Monsters Cosmetics a long, long time ago, but now they are Menagerie. So we've got the Dragon Child palette, the OG. Just looks like this, very cool toned, colorful vibes. We have the Violet Ink Palette, which is a tiny little purple palette. We have the Killer Purr Palette, which is all these fun neutral shades. The Whale Song Palette. All of the packaging on these is just stunning. This is a really pretty blue-green color story. We've got the Sugar High Palette. <laughs> so cute. Just looks like that. Next is their Serenity palette, which was a collaboration with Annette. It's like a grungy, colorful color story. Unfortunately, this one was pretty limited edition, hard to get your hands on. We have the Flight Club palette, which is another purple palette. So pretty. The mattes in here are so good. We have the Indigo ink palette, which looks like this. You can see Menagerie does a lot of color. And then lastly here, I have the Feral palette. Mine is a little bit different than how it comes, like if you buy it because I moved some shadows around and whatnot because there were two shadows in this that ended up getting changed. It's a whole long story, but here's what mine looks like. So I do have a few stacks of palettes from brands that are no longer a brand, unfortunately. So one of those would be Midas Cosmetics. So I have a bunch of their smaller palettes here. This is the Artistry Palette Volume 1, which is like a little pastel moment. We have the Artistry Volume 2, which is like this. And then we have the... Oh wait, this is another volume too. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what the names of all of these are, but you can't buy them anyways. So here's just like this cute little grungy color story. We have their collaboration with Smoky Glow, which was a really good one. Just looks like this. We have the Genesis palette that they did in collaboration with Drench Cosmetics. I love the navy packaging of this one with the gold letters, it's so pretty. We have the Lemonade palette, which is such a cute yellow color story. I like this way more than the ColourPop one that came out. And then we have the Midas and Cole MUA Serve Soft palette, which is a really cute neutral moment. I also have several palettes from the brand Blush Tribe, which is no longer available. And I did declutter a lot of their palettes but there were a few that I just could not let go of. So one is going to be the collaboration with Paulina. I loved this palette. It is a really beautiful like green, pink, purple moment. And then we have the Hasina 2 palette from Blush Tribe. This palette, like I did so many colorful looks with this one. I was just so obsessed. The blue, the purple, the green. Such a pretty color story. I feel like this was right when I was like really, really getting into indie makeup. We have the Sonia Zarin eyeshadow palette, which I believe is a bridal makeup artist. Just looks like this, super pretty tones. And then there's also the Neon Dreams palette, which I kept because I don't really have a lot of neon eyeshadows. So next I have some palettes here from Certify and I'm actually not sure if these are still available or not anymore. We have the Destiny palette, which looks like this. These kind of went viral on Instagram a while back. We have the Affinity palette, which is like this beautiful sunset color story. 
We've got the Dynasty palette, the Tropical Wonders palette. You can see these are all pretty well loved. And then my personal favorite was the Affinity 2 palette, which is like this stunning blue green color story. Okay, next we have two palettes here from Cosmic Brushes. So their newest palette is the Delicious Delights and this is a really stunning like pastel moment. And then I just could not help but get their Serenity palette because it is the prettiest like grungy green purple moment. I have a stack of palettes here from Melt Cosmetics. I actually have their blueprint palette as well but I did not pull it out, so my bad about that one, but I've got the Mary Jane palette here, which is a really pretty cool tone color story. I will say that it's definitely not quite what I expected because I bought it way later and I just, I don't know. I like it, but I don't love it. We have the Gemini 2 palette, the original Gemini palette, which this is actually my second time owning it, but it is stunning. We have the She's in Parties palette, which is like this pretty like mauve-y, purple-y moment. And then of course I have the Muerte palette here as well as the Vita palette, like one of my favorite collections of all time. And then lastly, we have the Brunette palette, which is kind of boring in comparison, but it's actually a really good palette, like just very simple, but I like it. Next, I have all of my palettes here from Shroud Cosmetics. So the OG original reason why I fell in love with them was actually when they were still called Stroke Cosmetics. This is their Creepy Cute palette. And honestly, for a long time, these were the best pastels on the market. They're still amazing. I love, love, love their matte shadows. And then we have the Creepy Cute 2 palette, which this one is not like as loved for me. The mattes are cute, but Creepy Cute original just has that place in my heart. We have the It's Freakin' Bats palette, their first collaboration with Butte Bean. I believe her Instagram handle is now Batty Bean, but I mean, this palette was iconic. It sold out in like 30 seconds. And luckily, a subscriber let me buy this from her. We have the Moonfall palette here, which is a little bit more dark and grungy. We have the Hollow Bean palette from Betty Bean, which was her second collaboration with Shroud. And then we also have the Peaches and Dreams palette, which is their newest launch. So cute. I felt like the shimmers in here were their best yet. Just absolutely stunning. I just have two palettes from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. So I've got their Vintage Rose palette here, which is a stunning like rosy palette with some pops of green, just super pretty. And then next we have the Juicy Olive palette. This color story was irresistible. Like, if you love grungy greens, how was I supposed to say no to that? I have two palettes here from Colored Rain Cosmetics. We've got the Safari Rain palette, which is unfortunately no longer available, but such a pretty mixture of some grungy greens, some gold, some warm tones. Like, I used to be obsessed with that palette. And then we also have the Queen of Hearts palette, which I never really understood the hype around this one. Like, I thought it was pretty but people loved this palette, like it was holy grail. And for me, like it just never, never captured my heart like that. Next I have all of my palettes here from Dose of Colors. We have both of the Desi and Katie palettes. So this one is the larger Frankation. And then we also have the little quad, which I don't remember what this was called, but it's named after all of the pets. Cute little quad. And then I've got a bunch of their like, little tiny palettes. We have the Marvelous Mauves here. Honestly, these are so good for just like a monochromatic matte moment. We have the Snow Angels palette. This is the only one that like the quality is not as good as all of the others, but I think it was limited edition. We have the Cutting Edge palette, a little bit more on the grungy side. The Sassy Siennas, which is some really like warm browns. The Baked Browns palette, which is like slightly more neutral browns, but like on the scale of things, still pretty warm. And then we have the Blushing Berries palette. Next, I have two different palettes from Love Lux Beauty. We have got their Something Fun palette, which is a little bit more of like a blue-green color story. And then the Something Gorgeous palette, which is more like pinky, orangey, purples. 
I have a few palettes here from Max Up The Makeup and I really love these. I thought the inspiration, the quality, like I thought they were so cute and I'm sad that I have not seen anything new from the brand in a really, really long time. But we've got their Flower Child palette. Like the packaging is so cute and like the color story is very groovy. There is the Ready Set Summer palette. My son actually saw this when I was organizing all these palettes and he's like, I love that one because it, it is very, very summery. And then we have the sweater weather palette, like just all the fall cuteness. Look at this one. I wish that they would make palettes again because the they're so cute. Okay, next I have two palettes from P. Louise. And it's funny because one of these is so extravagant and extra and the other is like bare bones minimum. So this is the original P. Louise palette, which I got because people were ranting and raving and going crazy about. And then this is the P. Louise, the Secret Sinner palette, I think is what this is called. Such extravagant, ridiculous packaging, honestly, but here's what this one looks like. Okay, next I have a stack of palettes here from Glamlight, which this is definitely the most funky packaging of everything, like everything is just different from one another. So we've got their Hershey's Cookies and Cream palette, which I did a video on super recently. It's like this pretty neutral, smoky, cool tone color story all about it. We have the original Michaela collaboration. Here is what she looks like. I've got the original pizza palette, which is ginormous and like it feels like makeup history right here. <laughs> there is the wine palette. Just a really pretty like monochromatic purple moment. I've got this pie palette. I'm not sure exactly what it was called, but it looks like a pie. And there's the inside. <laughs> We have the Red Velvet palette, which this was the one that I was salty about because there's not a true red in here. And I'm like, how are you gonna call it a Red Velvet palette? But it is still cute nonetheless. We've got the Veggie Lovers Little Pizza Slice, which just looks like this. Again, packaging is hilarious. There is the Dirty Martini palette, which is a stunning green color story. Super, super pretty shimmers in here. I've got the Alondra Desi palette, which was, a, I believe this was the first collaboration that they did, but I think that mine is actually growing a little bit of mold and like I have not been using this. It's very, very old, but like, I also don't wanna throw it away. I don't know, I'm torn. Like I'm not gonna use it, I promise, like that's gross. But again, it feels like makeup history. I'm, I just say that for everything apparently. And then we have the Royalty palette, which was another one of their original palettes. This one has a pressed glitter in it, which I feel like is a reason why like, I never ended up falling in love with it. We have the Caliente palette, which is a cute one. I definitely like their newer stuff more. Ooh, but I did love this one. This was their Miracle palette, and it is a really, really pretty one. I think they actually did end up putting this one in a boxy charm, if I'm not mistaken. And then lastly, one of my all time favorite Glam Lights palettes is the Cake palette. It is the cutest rainbow color story. Next, I have a stack of palettes from Ace Beauté, which honestly, they do some of the most beautiful color stories. Their packaging is a little bit more like simple and it all kind of like flows together. I don't know, it's really cute. So we have the Blossom Passion palette, which is all like very pinky shadows. We've got the Oceanic palette, which is giving all of the blue and green vibes. The Flare palette, which I love the packaging on this one. Very, very fall. The Tropical Vibes palette, which this is probably my favorite palette that they've ever done. I just love these colors so much. We've got the Slice of Paradise just a little bit more of a rainbow palette. The Paradise Fallen, got some cool purple neutrals. And then we have the Classical Paradise palette, which is another kind of like grungy neutral moment. I'm kind of ashamed to admit this, but I do have their Palettology palette as well, but it's still in the PR box. So yeah, I'm really late to that. Next we have all of the palettes that I have from Nomad Cosmetics. So I've got a few different quads here. We've got the Studio 54 quad, and then this is the Encinitas quad. 
and the Malibu quad. This one's so cute. And then we have this palette, which is called the Cartagena Magica palette. And this one is based on Cartagena Columbia. It's like this really beautiful warm tone color story. This one is the Iceland Fire and Ice palette. We have the Antilles palette with Nomad, which this is one of my oldest palettes that's still in my collection. And we have their Tokyo palette, which is the cutest pastel moment. Really, really adorable. Okay, the next giant stack that we have is all from Kaleidos. And they haven't released anything new in a while, but they still, they'll always have my heart. So, okay, I cannot remember what all of these things are called. And a lot of them don't even have names on them. So I'm sorry in advance, but we have the Glowing Iris Quad, which the packaging on these is super cute. It, even though it kind of looks like a uterus a little bit. We have the Flowing Haze Quad. And then this quad, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's like this really pretty, just soft neutral browns. I've used that quite a bit. We have the Flower Power Palette, which the packaging on this is just so cool. And then let's see, this is the Astro Pink Palette, the Electro Turquoise Palette, the Cyber Bronze Palette, the Sashimi City Palette, the Sci-Fi Green Palette, the VR Neon Palette, and then this one is the Lunar Lavender palette. So those are all their tiny ones. And then they also have the Club Nebula palette with Aniela Kanikvis. This is one of my favorite collabs of all time. The quality, the color story, everything is just so, so pretty. And then we also have the Escape Pod palette, which looks like this. Next, I have a bunch of palettes here from Musee Beauty, which is another brand that is unfortunately no longer around. We have the Impressionism palette here. All of their palettes are art-based and they're honestly stunning. Like the inspiration, the love that got put into them makes me sad they're not available anymore. Here is Le Jardin. It just looks like this. We've got the Rococo palette. The Van Gogh palette. And then this is the Art Nouveau palette which they did rebrand to Kalav, but again, I, I think that they just ended up closing down altogether. Okay, next I have a few palettes here from Nabla. I have their Wild Berry palette, which is so, so cute. We have the Coral palette, which these are like technically called their cutie palettes. And then I also have the Side by Side Nude palette. And this one, like I thought I was gonna be obsessed with, but I don't know, I feel like in person, it's just less cute than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, next I have two palettes here from Enchanted Luster Cosmetics. We have the Dragon Prism 2 palette, which is all like super sparkly intense shadows. And then this one, I don't have the name of what it was called, but there's what it looks like. Next I have two palettes from Tammy Tanuka or Sigil Inspired. And I can't remember what these are called because everything is in Russian here but I loved these. I thought they were such cute little six pan palettes. And we've got this one, which is like some type of chinchilla palette. And it's just like this cool tone purple moment. I just think these are both so pretty. Okay, next I have two palettes from Nasta Beauty and technically only one of these is an eyeshadow palette, but I just wanted to show you them both together because this is such a cute brand based all on nostalgia. So we have the Nostalgic Playlist Let's Make Up palette, which you guys, it's literally a CD, like you can pop it out and everything. It is just the coolest packaging. And then they also have the Swatch Me Face Palette. Look at this one. It is so cute. Next, I have two palettes from Be Perfect Cosmetics. So we've got the Carnival Palette with Stacey Marie, which is a giant one. I don't really reach for palettes like this anymore, but I used to be obsessed with them. And then this is the Carnival 3 Love Tahiti palette, which is another collaboration with Stacey Marie, makeup artist. This is a very big rainbow palette. Okay, lastly, I have a stack of palettes here, and these are all brands that I only own one palette from. So first I have this palette, which gosh, I cannot remember. I think this was like Dandy Cosmetics something. Is it written on the inside? It's not. 
Okay, so this is a really cute palette. It has like all these like flowers and everything on it. I thought the packaging was cute. It is a little bit on the softer side, not like the most amazing palette that I've ever tried, but you could definitely tell that there was heart put into it and it's just super, super cute packaging. It definitely stands out. I have one palette from Storybook Cosmetics. This is their Fairy Tales palette. I think this one is about Robin Hood. I got this in a boxy charm, I'm pretty sure, but it is a really cute little book palette. And then I've got one palette here from Sugar Pill. I think they're independently owned. This is the fun size palette. I've got one palette from Makeup Slave Cosmetics. This is the Autumn Equinox palette. I think this is the only palette they ever did and I don't think that they're a brand anymore, but I thought it was super cute, very fall themed. We have the Neon Drip palette from Poppy Cosmetics, which these are honestly the best neons that I've tried personally but I heard that a lot of people had issues getting this palette to them when they ordered it. So that's just something to keep in mind, but the quality is really, really good. I have the Sykes Box palette from Clara Psych, and this is all pastel shades. This brand, I think they've only had two palettes available for a really long time, but I just had to try this because I was so curious about their pastels. And then I have the True Beauty palette from BK Beauty, which I'm planning on decluttering because I don't really love it. It's just very, very soft, subtle tones, but it's still technically here in my collection and it's the only palette from BK Beauty. I have the Clarity Cosmetics Blue Royal palette, which I did not love this one. It's like this really intense blue palette and I love the color story, but this had like this overlay in it and it ended up being the same shade as that. and. It was just not like the easiest palette to blend. I just didn't love the shadows, but Clarity Cosmetics has been coming out with so many beautiful color stories. I have been nonstop tempted by them. So I feel like I need to give them another try very, very soon. I have a palette here from Lois Cosmetics, the Meet Me in the Underworld palette. This one actually has a special place in my heart because I was wearing it the very first time that I met my boyfriend, long before we were anything. So I, I don't know. I get sentimental over stupid things like that. <laughs> and then I have the El Barrio palette from Terra Moons Cosmetics, which is a super cute one. I have the Reason palette from DJ's Unique Boutique. And this is a really cute like Christmas inspired palette, but they went like a different route. Even though it's Christmassy, it's all these like blues and greens. I have the Game Beauty Fantasy palette, which just looks like this. Again, pretty cool packaging. I did that wrong. <laughs> I have the Milf palette from Sugar Drizzle Cosmetics, which actually means, man, I love frogs in case you didn't know. <laughs> so here's what this one looks like, just all shimmers. I have one palette from Linda Halberg Cosmetics. This is the Spectral palette, although I was very tempted to buy some more of their palettes because they came out with the cutest cool tone color story. But here's what Spectral looks like. I also have one palette here from Burnovich. This is the Sansara palette, which is just like a really neutral one. And then last but not least, I have the Danessa Myricks Lightwork Volume 3 Infinity Light palette, which is a mixture of highlighters and multi-chromes. So that is pretty much all of my indie palettes. The only brands that I was like indecisive on sharing with you is I have some stuff from Alter Ego, but I'm not entirely sure if they're independently owned. And then I also have some palettes from Sigma Beauty, which again, not sure if they're independently owned or not. I think that they might be. I believe they were when they started, but that is all of the indie eyeshadow palettes in my collection. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that you were able to grab a snack and a drink, maybe some popcorn. I could go for some popcorn right now because I'm sure this was hella long, but I enjoyed having you here and I will see you in the next one. Bye.